The Sony a6600 is currently Sony's top of the line crop censored mirrorless camera. But I mean, who cares about that? We all know real pros only use full frame. That's, that's a joke, by the way, please don't set fire to the channel. So today let's compare the Titan of the crop sensor bodies to one of the most popular full frame cameras ever made. And it's one of my personal favorites, the Sony a7 III. Both of these share a lot of the same features, but I do think one comes out on top for the online content creator. Which one is it? Let's find out. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dead, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. So again, these two cameras share a lot of the same kind of features as Sony. I mean, honestly, Sony hasn't really made any drastic changes under the hood functionality wise in any of their newer cameras. We will talk about some in a bit, but they share the same mount, same video codecs, same battery, and the same menu system. But before we get too far into this comparison, I would like to thank my friends over at BH Photo for loaning me this A6600 for the next couple of weeks. The A7 III is my own personal camera that I've owned for a while now, and if you'd like to get either of these, there will be links in the description below, right down there. Pew, 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 pew. But that was embarrassing. Let's start off with that most vicious camera fight, video quality. The Sony a6600 has a 24 megapixel APS-C size sensor, your crop sensored camera, while the a7 III has a 24 megapixel full frame sensor. What's the big what's the big deal, huh? They can both record up to 4K 30 frames per second and can do slow motion in up to 1080p 120 frames per second. One of the real big benefits of Sony cameras is these are both rocking the E mount, meaning that lenses compatible with one will be compatible with the other and all of Sony's other mirrorless cameras. Both cameras also have Sony's built-in in-body image stabilization and both of them also have the cutting edge Sony phase detection autofocus system. The A6600 has 425 points system and the a7 III has 693 point system. Now, don't get too wrapped up in those numbers. Bigger isn't necessarily better. It just has to do with the size of the sensor. There's physically more space to put autofocus points in the a7 III, but we'll talk more about the overall system later. And most excitedly, they are both rocking the newish Sony Z-Type battery, and this is actually the best thing Sony's come up with recently. Now, that's enough talking about the specs. How do these actually stand up when it comes to image quality? If you're gonna use this to take video, what's it gonna look like? And there's not that much difference. I mean, they will basically give you the same image, which I mean, I think looks good. If you like Sony image quality, you will like these cameras because they're on the cutting edge of Sony consumer image quality. If you don't, well, you were never gonna like this in the first place and you were definitely gonna tell us in camera forums every single day how much you dislike these cameras. We're all different people. The biggest weakness, now the biggest weakness of both of these and any Sony consumer level camera line is their codec. You are locked into XAVC, which is an 8-bit 420 codec. No matter which of these hybrid cameras you buy, from the lowest, like down to the totem pole to the A6100, all the way up to their brand new resolution melting A7R4, you get the same thing. If you shoot, why does that matter? If you shoot in the standard picture profile, it doesn't. It will not matter to you that much. And honestly, most online content creators do shoot on standard picture profile, so I wouldn't sweat it. If you like the image quality, You'll, that's fine. If you really wanna start digging into the included S-Log modes, you know, their log rhythmic profiles, you'll have a little less leverage, you will get some banding than with another brand's 10-bit codec. Speaking of log modes, each of these cameras have access to the same picture profiles, which include Sony's S-Log 2 and 3, and their new HLG high dynamic range mode. The biggest difference image quality wise between the two sensors, now if you're talking straight up image quality, the big difference is gonna be those sensor sizes we talked about earlier. Full frame cameras with full frame lenses, one of the major, like if you're talking just like base, like things you can do, depth of field wise. Depth of field is the difference between what's in focus and what's out of focus on an image. And it's much easier to get a wider, shallower depth of field with a full frame camera. Now I'm not saying it's impossible with the A6600, it's just gonna be more expensive and you'll probably have to do it with the same lenses but you'll get that additional 1.5 times APS-C crops. The other big difference is gonna be low light performance, but I'm gonna skip over this. You know, I'm, I'm accepting the ire of the online community because Sony's sensors are so good anymore that any one of their cameras, even the one inch censored ones that they have for point shoots, they're so good in low light that full frame, ben is, the benefit is pretty negligible unless you're like recording your videos in a cave. And the third major difference between these two in image quality wise is the A7 III has a record limit 
of 2959. It has a 30 minute recording limit when recording in any of its mode. The only way to extend this is to record externally into something like an Atomos device like the Ninja 5 that I use all the time. But the A6600 has unlimited recording. Combine that with that bigger Z-Type battery and the A6600 will be able to record very long presentations or anything else. Like if you want a live stream or something like that, this will go much longer and it will do things that the A7 III can't do. The other side of the video quality coin is audio quality. And in my experience, that's the most important. Like it's not even close. And there is, there's practically no difference here between the two cameras, which is to say both are great. I've said this plenty of times, but there are only two companies out there that I really trust to nail internal audio recording. And those are Sony and Panasonic. Both of these cameras have 3.5 millimeter audio in and they've got a headphone out. So if you are a camera operator, if you're not the YouTuber that does everything in front of the camera and you are the camera operator and not both operator and talent, you can monitor everything going on here is like if you're behind it. You can also lower the gain down to ensure no unnecessary audio peaking and the Sony cameras sound fantastic. But something else that's really awesome in this line is even, and this is better than even in my beloved GH5, their XLR adapter, the K3M, is able to work on both of these cameras. So if you want fantastic 48 volt, Phantom Power XLR microphones, you can get that with either of these cameras by popping that adapter straight into the hot shoe mount no wires needed. On the Panasonic line, the DMW XLR1, which we are currently using, it only works in the GH5, the S1, the S1R, and the S1H. It doesn't work on any of their lower end cameras. So combine these two features together and you get what I and many other online content creators to be a powerful one-two punch See that, the punch, the power all comes from the hip uh, of image quality and audio quality. However, a camera could have the best, most prettiest images and the cleanest, crispiest audio, but if it's a huge pain in the butt to get that quality or it takes just so much work that it negates a lot of that benefit because you've got tight timelines for releases, uh, it doesn't matter as much. So ease of use becomes a very big hot button item that's very important to me. The best ways that companies can make their cameras easier to use are to decrease the amount of extras you need. Like if you need to have the cameras, for example, both of these cameras, like mentioned in the spec overview, have absolutely fantastic continuous video autofocus. I think, this might be controversial, but I think that Sony's autofocus is the best on the market right now, even overtaking Canon's dual pixel throne. But even though they have the same type of system, both of these cameras have the same type of system, there are some key differences that actually make the A6600 the better autofocusing camera. In stills mode, they both have the practically cheating Sony eye detect autofocus. The A6600, however, continues to have that while recording video. The A7 III reverts back to face tracking autofocus. Now, it sounds impressive, but in all reality, like in actual use, it's not that big of a deal. The face tracking autofocus works just about the same. So we're not gonna give that too much weight, but if you are somebody that uses a monitor on either of these cameras, the A6600 is the much easier to use. For some reason on the earlier Sony cameras that did 4K, you lose face tracking autofocus if you plug the camera into a monitor. The A6600 does end up being easier to use because you do not lose that face eye detection autofocus when it's plugged in. You have to be, I mean, you have to accept 24 frames per second, which I get, that's tough. Who likes 24 frames per second? It's not that big of a deal because you'd probably end up using the flip up screen anyway, but it's nice for times where you wouldn't want to or be able to use this screen. Or if you're recording something and you're sending it out through HDMI, but you still want to check it through this screen, that makes it much easier. Next up, let's continue talking about that flip up screen because honestly, that's the real big benefit of going with the A6600 over the A7 III. I mention this all the time, so I won't beat this horse up too bad, but having a monitor in front of the camera is one of the most useful, if not the most useful features a camera can have if you are a solo creator. And you know what? Let's put all of this together and take the cameras out for a quick vlogging test. See you out there. Okay, and welcome to the vlogging test of the Sony a7 III versus the a6600. Now, normally when I do these vlogging tests, I have both cameras going at the same time. But what we're gonna see today is I'm actually gonna try to show you how the K3M works. We're using that power to XLR adapter that I talked about earlier in the video. And I'm gonna try to show you how the audio sounds when it's plugged into both of the cameras. Plus we're using the exact same lens, the 18 to 135 kit lens of the a6600 because you know, why not? And you can see today we're out here at the beautiful coast and the wind is crazy. So this is a pretty, we do have the dead cat on. So hopefully it's able to save the audio a little bit. Uh, but yeah, where else would you want to be except out here on the coast where it's bitterly freezing out. And uh, yeah, 
So, okay, we're now we're done with the A7 III, let's switch over to the A6600. And you, you can't really hear the snap because I've got gloves on because it's freezing out here, so uh, snap! Okay, now we are on the A6600. And one of the cool things about using the K3M is I can kind of see the flip-up screen. Uh, not exactly, I can't see everything, but I can kind of see at least that I'm in focus and that I'm framed properly. So that's cool to know. I've never actually tried to vlog with these two, with these two before. So yeah, this is the vlogging test, just hand-holding. I'm just holding on to the lens itself of the A6600 with the 18 to 135. We're in 4K. All the same settings that we were just on with the a7 III, but the K3M. And man, it is cold out, but it's such a beautiful day. I really, so when it's raining out, I hate doing the vlogging test because it's like gross. But when it's beautiful out, I kind of like, I get so wrapped up in like being out and nice in the environment that sometimes the vlogging tests don't actually happen. So this is the vlogging test with the a6600. Both of the cameras have internal in-body image stabilization, and we are at one two thousandths shutter speed because of how darn bright it is. I didn't bring uh, any ND filters out to the coast today. Oh well. All right, so back inside. You guys go back while well, you guys are enjoying the warmth. I hope it's nice and warm wherever you are because it's not here. Let's go back to Ted that is nice and warm inside of the studio. Back inside. <laughs> and we're back. Whew. I like light cameras better. The third major category for comparison is the overall upgrade path slash ecosystem. Both of these cameras do share that E-mount and they have the same connections and they have the same battery. So there isn't that big of a difference in the overall ecosystem. You can use the same lenses, you can use the same batteries, you can use basically the same everything. What I will say here is a difference between the two is I do think the A6600 continues to have the edge here because with its lighter weight and smaller size, you can use smaller support equipment like smaller gimbals, smaller tripods, smaller everything. And that does mean it will be easier and cheaper to build a video rig around this as opposed to the bigger A7 III. Now that's not to say you couldn't do the same on the A7 III because plenty of people have and do, it's just, I mean, when you talk about ecosystem, it's really the only big difference between the two. But at the end of the day, so what, right? Which of these two cameras, which of them works best for the online content creator? So this is a tough one. I mean, I very much like the a7 III. It's been my stills camera for the past, what, like four or five months? I mean, this has taken basically, ooh, we almost dropped it. This has taken basically all of the thumbnails that you've ever seen on the channel in that time frame. I take family photos with this. I do all of my photography besides like cell phone stuff with the a7 III. I love the image quality, but I don't really use it for video. I've got my, you know, my beloved GH5 for that. If you only wanted one camera to do everything, I easily give my recommendation to the a6600. The flip up screen, the battery life, they're just so crazy useful and it makes it such an easier overall camera to use in any, almost any situation. Now, if you are if a revenue stream coming in and you are able to have different cameras for different purposes, then yeah, I would continue recommending the a7 III for stills camera. I love it, I love it but I like my GH5 better for video. And if you liked this video, I bet you'd like the one where I unbox the A6600 and give my overall, I guess, second initial, initial times two impressions of this beast of a camera. And you can find that by clicking right here. We'll, we'll make sure right here, click, 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 click. Thanks for watching. And I just, I did just hit my hand on the table doing that. <laughs>